Hey Turtle Nerds, welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, I wanna show you guys how you can keep baby or even juvenile, nah, I don't suggest adult turtles, in an enclosure with no heater, no lighting, and no filter. So now before we get started with today's video though, if you guys wanna support me and support the channel, hit the link right up over here and consider heading over to my Patreon. Over there, you get direct access to me, videos a day early. I post turtles on there when I have them available and I think there's a couple left. You get to ask me questions, you get bonus photos, photos, discounts on merch, all kinds of good stuff. So definitely consider going over there. It helps me be able to keep running everything and then keep the lights on, literally. So first we have a couple things to do. We gotta feed these guys, we gotta check on everyone in the incubator and we have to perform a water change. But I'm gonna talk about some of the essentials for these little tubs for hatchling turtles, which is basically UVB, a heater to keep the water warm and a filter. And we're gonna talk about why you might not need any of these three pieces of equipment under very particular circumstances. So what I do, first thing when I wake up, we're gonna go ahead and open up this thing. We got our little ornates down here. I do water changes every other day. So today I need to do a water change because I feed so much. You can see there's a little film starting on the surface of the water here. We're gonna toss these guys a little bit of food here and you see they're gonna go right for it. They are really, really, really good eaters. We're gonna toss a little in the back. This is how I feed them. I toss them a little bit depending on where they're at, which also lets me take a head count of everyone and make sure everyone's here. I see one hidden in the weeds below right there. A little bit more food. These guys eat a lot. These two always hang out together. There they go. They are munch crunching away. Those two, one in the back, and then there's two more. Oh, here's one who just popped its little head out. So watch this. We're gonna throw you a little bit of food. Don't freak out, don't freak out. There we go. See? There it goes. And I will probably end up doing this another two or three times today just to make sure that they're eating a nice amount. But then also today is water change day. We're gonna take a nice big pinch of this food, bring it up to the piranhas. These guys are going crazy. So to mitigate aggression in these guys, I make sure to feed them plenty, plenty of food multiple times throughout the day, just so that way they're not ever nipping at each other. They're not ever trying to bite one another because baby terrapins will end up doing that if they're not well fed and they're not taken care of. So that's exactly what I'm doing right here. You see they do not hesitate anymore to come and start eating. I also need to do a water change in this setup. You see there's that film starting to form. That's fine, that's just extra protein from uneaten food or from their waste. This is why I change out 100% of their water every other day to keep things nice and clean for these quickly growing little babies. And then usually I do this and then I'll walk away, see how everybody's eating over here. Everyone's looking pretty good. So these guys finished up their food very, very quickly. We're gonna throw them a little bit more. And because peanut and jelly here are also starting to come out, they can smell the food. I guess they're hungry, so we'll toss them a little bit of food as well. These nice little bite-sized morsels. See, watch this. There they go, off to Munch Crunch. Get it, peanut. Nice, throw them a little bit more. And these guys love that food. These two are my best eaters. These two are gonna grow way quicker than everyone else if they keep this up. Now let's check on these babies in the incubator. There are four of these guys. The fifth egg I opened up, turned out it was a dud. So none of them have entered the water yet. I suspect within the next two days they will. We've been over this a few times, but for those who don't know, the turtles will emerge from their eggs and then they stay buried or underground or hidden for about three to six days in the little like cavity thing that they're in. And see, these guys are all getting ready soon to come up and out. I'm gonna put this right back over. I don't wanna bother them. But essentially what'll happen is when these guys are ready for water, when they feel like their yolk sacs are properly absorbed and everything, and they, you know, when they're ready to leave the nest on their own terms, basically this would be in nature when they emerge from the ground. So they hatch in their eggs and then another three to five to six to seven, sometimes even two weeks later, then they emerge up and out of the ground. And so when they're ready to do that, I'll find them in the water in and around the incubator. So one of these days I'm gonna open this up and there's gonna be them all up in the water. That's when I know that they were ready to roll. Actually, I do kind of want to check on them. Check on their yolk sacs. Mind if I check on you? Oh yeah, those yolk sacs are like completely absorbed. 
So they actually look pretty good. All right, buddy, relax, relax. Okay, now I don't want him to go up and over right now, which is what he's about to try to do. You don't want to do that. Put this right back over and then cover it up. And if I find him in the water later, I know that it's premature just because I picked them up and he's mad. Put him right back in and he'll stay in there. Because that's what two of them did. Two of them still had their yolk sacs and they just got mad because I moved them from an outdoor container into here. And then they ended up jumping out and into the water, which is kind of not when you still have your yolk sac. So I put them back in there. And then as you can see, they all kind of got the hint and have stayed in that little, little, uh, little, little dish thingy. So look, do you see how these guys are always looking and always searching for food? It's because this is what they would do in the wild. They would go out and keep looking for little critters, little bugs, insects, minnows, whatever they could find to eat. So I try to mimic that behavior and like sprinkle in food throughout the day. That way they're not bored and they always have little bits of food to find. And I always look at the filter to see if there's any extra food, uneaten food, so I know if I fed too much or too little. But I'm about to change the water on this enclosure but before i do that i always give them one final little feeding so we're going to sprinkle in a little bit more for these guys you can see they're already looking at me you want some food always 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 are hungry these little guys so see those two are eating tossing a bunch like this and you see these guys are just absolute little piranhas. They go crazy, crazy, crazy for their food. That's five of them here right now. Number six is always a little bit of a loner, always kind of sticks to himself. So now I just sit here, I wait for them to eat and finish up their food, and then I will change out all of the water. I want to be annoying, and I want to pick another up and check on how they're growing, because these guys, oh wow, they're getting huge really, really quickly. This little guy, I bring them up here just so I can get a better look at them. Still has its egg tooth. Yolk sac entirely healed up and already getting quite large. This shell, this shell is a little bit soft. So I'm gonna supplement with a little bit of calcium. I guess they're like very freshly hatched though. So no wonder why. But this one is looking really, really good. That new growth is coming in beautifully. I'm very pleased with that. Let's put you back. Do a little health checkup on some of them. This is the one with the damaged shell, slightly. Yep, that looks like it's healing up fairly well. I understand I'm annoying, but I figure I'm gonna irritate them anyway by doing a water change. Might as well pick them up and do a health checkup on everyone. Make sure that they're all looking okay because I haven't actually comprehensively picked them all up and checked on them in quite a while. This one's looking super good. You are looking superb. So this is one of the ones that's eating a whole lot is growing really, really quickly. I really like this one. Its head is nearly actually spotless. That's kind of cool. So unlike outside, I do have a filter in order to keep the water a little bit more clean and I have a heater to keep the water warm. But other than that, that's all you need for these baby turtles. You need primarily UVB, heated water, heated clean water and UVB and you're, and you're basically in business. So I can achieve the heated water and the UVB by keeping them outside and the filters just to help buffer and keep the water a little more clean than normal. But if it's outside, it's way easier to do water changes than in here. So I don't keep a filter. So literally all I have to do for these guys, I'll show you right now. So the filter and heater are right here connected to this. I can unplug the filter and heater over here. Now all I have to do is take my bucket like this take my little hose, start the siphon, and then I can suck up all icky nasties and perform 100% water change on this little baby turtle tub. Now look at all that garbage in the water there, and that was all in here. And now these little baby turtles are a little bit peeved off, but we can see they're really looking good. They're getting some really nice growth on them. I really like these ones, the ones that look like this little guy. They look like a whole different subspecies. Anyway, they're mad at me. It's fine. So I just dump out this water and we fill it right back up, kick on the pump, kick on the heater, and we're in business. And now we literally just... And just like that, water's all changed. Everyone's happy and healthy. So now let's head outside. Let me show you the real fun stuff. Now, because it is so hot, and humid out. These guys are getting secondary UVB. First of all, there's morning sun, right? So think about the three things these guys need. They need heated, clean water, and UVB. So I don't necessarily need a filter in either of these two little setups, as long as I'm changing out the water frequently, which I am. Like every other day I do. You can see there's a little bit of waste and garbage right there. So literally all I have to do is dump this out. They get morning sun, they get secondary UVB. Even though we're in the shade, there's still plenty of UVB that they're getting. And 
And then because it's so hot out, it's summertime, it is August in the south, so they are getting plenty of warmth. So this water's at probably about 80, 82 degrees, which is literally exactly what I would have it at inside. So we have the four fresh little babies right in here that still have their little egg teeth. You can see there's one poking out right there. There's one of those little babies. There's another one right here. Hi, buddy, sorry to disturb you. So anyway, yeah, this is one way I'm still thinking about getting all my hatchlings out here just because I don't need a filter, I don't need a heater, and I don't need a heat lamp. Nothing to plug in, literally just tubs with little baby turtles. Some people have a dedicated turtle room where they keep the entire turtle room at like 84 degrees, in which case I could eliminate that little heater. Some people do water changes literally every day, which would eliminate the need for a filter, but you definitely need that UVB if you are keeping these turtles inside. But that eliminates two more pieces of equipment. If you're keeping turtles on a really large scale, people will set up racks like this and put big old things of UVB lighting and then heat the entire room and then just do water changes every day. That's how I did it when I was at my internship at the TSA. Even the water changes were automated. I mean, that that was a perfected process. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and you learned something and I'll see y'all in the next one.